For more on the fixed income market, let's welcome Guy Labah. He's chief fixed income strategist at Janney Montgomery Scott. He's joining us from Philadelphia with more on what's going on in fixed income. And Guy, I actually want to turn to Treasuries for a moment to start off here. Um, a lot going on in the Treasury market. We have seen a bit of a reversal recently. Do you think, or how long do you think, I should say, the reverberations of Dubai, of Greece, potentially of Spain and elsewhere will continue through the Treasury market? Well, we really think these sort of sovereign credit woes, at least for the moment, are a little bit of a secondary issue. You know, they're sort of a, a one and done, you know, one day of concern and then the markets kind of move on. Well, it's really a bigger picture here are economic conditions because there's still a lot of questions about growth for 2010 in particular. Now, all of that said, we are still, you included, hearing from most fixed income strategists who say rates are going to go up late next year. I guess it's too early for us to continue to see uh, Treasury yields go higher ahead of that? Yeah, right now I think we've sort of reached a point of at least resistance on the upside for, for higher rates for the balance of 2009. You know, actually this week we saw what was kind of a pattern for the past several Fed weeks, which is that we see traders exiting position to reduce their risk ahead of the Fed meeting. As soon as the Fed comes out, they step in and start buying again. So really I think this week has been more a story of short-term technicals, the more intermediate to uh, longer-term pictures, a little bit stable, toward, too oriented towards higher rates. I'm also curious, you know, finally things have sort of quieted down and demand seems to have declined in terms of the Treasury auctions. Do you think that's a trend that we're going to continue to see, that demand's not going to be as strong? Well, I think we saw a few weak auctions last uh, last week, and particularly on the long end of the curve, the 30-year bond. Really, we believe that was more a factor of year-end coming up. It was the first time in memory that the Treasury had sold 30-year bonds just a couple of weeks before year-end. I think it's really an issue of balance sheets, uh, corporations and banks not having enough cash or wanting more cash over year-end rather than purchasing long-term bonds. So that's more short-term. I think there's a lot of support for Treasury auctions going through 2010. And again, the real factor is going to be economics. Now, in addition to economics, I want to bring politics into this for a moment, because a lot of regulatory issues, obviously, before Congress, not just Bernanke being confirmed, but also talking about potentially mortgage reform, banking regulation, uh, regulation reform, a lot of talk about Fed policy limitations. Do any of these have implications for the bond market? Well, I think the biggest thing that we're concerned about right now is limitations on the Fed's power and especially their ability to independently act. It's very important in our minds for the Fed to remain independent from Congress and other elected officials so that they can have the sort of credibility they need to be able to fight inflation and make tough decisions when the time for that comes. Do you think so they're going to be able to, the... to remain independent? Well, we see some initial cracks in that foundation, of course, with the amendment that uh, Mr. Ron Paul introduced to a financial reform package. Uh, those cracks are not wide enough to be majorly concerning right now, but they are kind of the first evidence that there might be issues down the road. We were just talking, um, to turn back to sort of how to position yourself in the bond market right now, we were just talking about all of the junk bond issues that have uh, happened at the beginning here of December. Do you think that's a good alternative for folks right now? Well, in the high yield markets, of course, the, uh, the formal name for junk, uh, in the high yield markets, we see actually some pretty big stresses coming down the road. Those stresses are really in the 2011 to 2015 time frame, so the longer term outlook is fairly troubling. Uh, namely, there's close to a trillion dollars of debt that's maturing over that period and will have to be refinanced. That might prove a challenge for high yield issuers. Well, why is that going to be a challenge in that time period in particular? I mean, will credit, for instance, be... It, seem, it would seem that it would be a little bit looser by that time. We certainly expect so, but keep in mind that many of the issues maturing in 2011 to 2015 were originated in the 2005 to 2007 sort of free credit boom. And during that period, there were all these structures, highly leveraged hedge funds, et cetera, that were able to lend to high-yield borrowers. Okay, well, when these loans and these bonds mature, those same lenders, they're not around anymore. And I think that's the real long-term problem we're facing. All right, Guy LeBond, unfortunately we're out of time. He's Chief Fixed Income Strategist at Janney Montgomery Scott. Thanks, Guy.